That time I heard a little girl's laughter. It was Rika Friday, last survivor of the Friday family in Decorant Head. However, she wasn't really treated as one. During the family council, she'd often draw pictures or take a nap in the hag's bed. She wasn't even invited to last night's meeting. It was hard to believe such a little girl was responsible for a part of the curse system. However, even though she wasn't in a respected position as the head of the Friday family, there were plenty of old people who worshipped her as the reincarnation of Oya Shersama. I'd heard from someone that Tariqa Friday was rather odd, and seemed to behave as if she knew she was that reincarnation. Maybe Dr. Nassan had told me that at the library when she was alive. When Rick Friday became worried about something, the elderly people who worshipped her would make arrangements. It was very similar to the Sonazaki family, and it was also the same system as used for the curse. I wonder, does Rick Friday know anything about the deaths of Dr. Nassan and Tom Takasan? What does she think of people sneaking into the ritual storehouse? Does she know who snuck in and what happened to those people? You know, in a way, think back to uh, one scene right at the end of Tatari Goroshi. Although, I can't really remember if it was like, it was kind of, uh, not sure if Rika actually knew about it, but she probably did kind of find out about it, I'd imagine. Maybe, or maybe it just never came to light. But there was like something like that that you kind of like see a bit of like that, sort of, I don't know. As the one managing the storehouse, it was possible that she noticed the intruders first. In fact, she was the only one who could have noticed it. She must have passed on that information, which was why the curse was executed. That foolish case she turned the light on when we went into the ritual storehouse. That light switch could have been connected to some kind of an alarm. Rick Friday, the leader of the Friday family. Maybe getting to know her would be a good idea. As the leader of the Friday family, how much do you know about the incident? I asked her all directly. It was hard to tell if she understood I was asking her in a place to the Sonozaki family head, instead of as me on Sonozaki. Are you talking about Tomataki and Takano? Rika answered. The news hadn't been made public yet, she knew about it. Although she looked immature, perhaps she truly was the head of the Verita family. That's the curse of Oya Shirasama. I already know that. But it's not over yet, is it? There should still be two more. Have you heard about what will happen to them? I tried to be vague to see how Rika Verita would react. I've been thinking that she had nothing to do with the underside of Inuma's hours, and she was always treated like a child. However, Rika had just said things about the incident which normal people shouldn't know anything about. That proves she belonged to the underside's network. I don't think that matters anymore. She answered the question about Tom Takasan and Tuck Nassan fairly quickly, but took a little longer to answer this time. Did she have to think about it? Shit, the look on her face never changes! impossible to figure out what she's thinking. What do you mean? How can they get away with what they've done? I think if they feel bad about what they've done, that should be fine. You know, with Rika, there is, like, it's obvious, like, in the fourth question arc, we kind of saw much more of her, but not really to an extent. But there is a shit ton to Rika's character than has been established in the whole series so far. But we won't get to really fully see it all until later answer arcs that still haven't been released, I'll also point out there. Although we will see a bit more Tarika in this arc as well. That kind of like puts another extra layer on her character because remember the first uh, two question arcs? Well, actually, no, just the first question arc actually. Rika was barely even there. She was kind of in the background for most of that. In the second one, which was the question arc to this, she kind of played a bit of a role. And, you know, since the answer arc is going to play that kind of role again. And then she kind of played quite a bit of a role in the third one. Then she was center in the plot in the fourth one. And so, never mind, actually, she has been kind of in the center of the plot here and there. But still. There's more to her than, you know, meets the eye or wherever the saying goes. The response was unexpected, especially after seeing all the old people who get so fierce last night. 
The trespass and ritual strife was blasphemy against Orange Chair Summoner. The village elders had said those intruders deserve to die. Yet the leader of the Frida family, who protected the sacred storehouse for ritual uh, implements, said that if they felt remorse for it, then that was fine. I recalled how people fought over Rika Frida's father during the dam conflict. Yes, her father was called an opportunist back then. He didn't agree with the Onigafuchi guardians, he had resisted violently during the conflict. Like father, like daughter. I aggressively grabbed Rika Frida by the collar. Huh? What the heck are you talking about? You're pretty stupid, just like your predecessor, aren't you? Frida family must understand better than anybody how secret a ritual storehouse is. How could the head of that family say such a thing? I laughed at myself. I was told the same thing by someone else and was now saying it to Rika. She's totally acting out of character. She's supposed to be pretending to be me on. Don't you know how serious a crime trespassing in the ritual storehouse is? It's a very important place for you, Shirisama. Nobody can go in without permission. See, you know that. Those four people brought their, f uh, their filth in there. What bad kitty cats? Meow. <laughs> That's right, bad cats. Two cats have been caught and punished. There are two more. Meow. <laughs> how do you think they should be punished? Tell me your opinion, as the head of the Frida family. Rika really didn't uh, usually wear any expression whatsoever, making it impossible to tell what she was thinking. But while I grabbed her by the collar and stared at her, I could tell somehow. Rika was a little disturbed. I sensed she was trying to see what I was thinking in turn. I want to forgive those two kitty cats. Why should they get away with what they've done? Me? What are you trying to say? That's a good question, so let me explain. Those two must stop for a compensation for what they've done. They have to clear away their sins. Otherwise, our assurance them won't stop being angry. Every crime must be punished appropriately. Do you understand? Why well, you sure doesn't get angry even if someone enters the storehouse? Huh? What are you saying? The reason why nobody's allowed to see the ritual storehouse is because there are too many scary tools in there. I'm sure people would get scared if they saw them. That's why we don't let people in there. I'm sure those intruders were scared too. And I'm sure they feel bad about what they've done. The forgiven ones to feel bad about what they've done. That's not for you to decide. That's why I sure Sama decides. I'm the shrine maiden of Oya Shira Sama, don't you know? Of course I do! You aren't telling me that Oya Shira Sama told you he isn't angry, are you? Rick nodded yes without a hesitation. I can't believe the lie she's coming up with. I'm not surprised. I'm shocked. Huh? That's why your parents died of the curse two years ago. I well, sure someone was angry because they didn't, didn't deserve to serve him. That's why he cursed your father. Jesus Christ, Shion. You've become so cold-blooded since you went into yon dairy mode. I wish sure someone would never do that. My father didn't die because of the curse of all your sure Blah! Am I really talking to the last shrine maiden of the Furue family? Obviously, Oyashira Sama can't be at peace. We're supposed to worship Oyashira Sama. How pathetic. I don't know why you're so angry, me. I realized she was in a position to know as much as the other two family heads. As proof she talked about this year's incident as though it was nothing. Yet she could feign ignorance with a serious face. She sure is something. She's even better than me. I slapped her a few times and pushed her to the floor. Rika, having tumbled downward, looked up at me with tears in her eyes. It's all happened because you wanted to change the storehouse lock to something that was easier for you, right? That's true. The old one was too heavy, so I told the Kimiyoshi and he changed it to a cheaper, lighter one. If you left the heavy lock on, maybe that would have prevented uh, them from trespassing. It's your fault, too. Don't you forget that. Most Kimiyoshi family who actually changed the lock is responsible for this too. The last part was something I added on a whim. I needed it to connect uh, Rika's story to the disappearance of Kimiyoshi. I wanted to pressure her psychologically by doing so. The head of the Kimiyoshi family had to pay for his crime. That's why he disappeared. The head of the Frida family has to pay for her crime too, you know. Rika was still on the floor, tears pouring down her cheeks. 
Kitch my bar is the last one left. I suppose the Freida family will take care of him. I don't know anything. You don't need to know anything, do you? You just have to look worried, that's all it takes. That's how it is at our house too. Anyway, good luck. I don't. Rika hung her head. She seemed to want to say something, but she was afraid that I might be rough with her again. I doubted Rika Freida was actually at the top of the curse system like the hag was. However, as one of the three family heads, she was a lot closer to the underside of Inimizara than I was. By now, that underside was well aware of Keiji Maibara. I told the elderly leaders of the village yesterday in the meeting that Keiji Maibara was the last one remaining. I just told the head of the Freida family the same thing. If threateningly. If my threat was effective, the curse of Oyashir Sama should very soon fall upon Keiji Maibara. And at just the right time, I would grab my enemy right as he took my bait. If the assassin came from Freire family, the girl would have committed the same sin as the hag. When that time came, I wouldn't hold back. I was going to make sure she suffered and then kill her. Jesus Christ! I've heard of a torture technique where you pound dozens of nails into a victim's um, fingers. I already found a restraining table and tools for it. When the time comes, I'll pound nails into your fingers. That gruesome anticipation radiated from my eyes and scared Rika even further. Jesus Christ, man! Shion has got to be the most violent of the... Just like, Jesus Christ! All because of freaking Satoshi. It's like, oh, but she fell in love with Satoshi at first sight, now she's fucking just bonkers. There will be, like, le later on down the line in the answer arcs, we'll find out more and more and stuff and kind of see how it goes and all that but seriously Shion man you bloody lost it more there's no words for it simply saying Yonderi isn't enough she is freaking bonkers I wonder how Camille she is doing I mean she is literally she is more or less like a terrorist at this point in mentality, isn't it? Just like, she doesn't care if she lives or dies. She just wants to, you know, uncover the truth and revenge and shit. I doubt he died from tiptoeing all night, but sometimes a human can go very easily. He already told me everything I wanted to hear, and he doesn't know anything else anyway. On top of that, he was responsible for spreading the infection that was the curse system of our system. His sins are very heavy. I really liked Uncle Kimiyoshi. He'd always been kind. The hag was so tough on her relatives. And that's why he was extra nice to me. When we talked yesterday, I was so happy to hear him say he would forgive Shion. He even said he would fight the hag to save her. That made me very happy. Don't worry. If Shion Chan feels bad about what she has done, she won't be deemed away. Leave it to me. I felt such warmth inside of me. I almost shivered. So I was so happy, yet so very sad. You know, maybe if Kimiyoshi hadn't freaking pissed her off by, say, by insulting Satoshi, maybe she wouldn't have gone even further into her insanity and cold demonar of just like, where she's pretty much just like, will kill anyone who had anything to do with Satoshi's supposed disappearance or death. For he continued to say that Satoshi-kun deserved to die. He said those nice things because he wanted to make me unhappy since she was worried about Shion. Satoshi-kun deserved to die because he was a member of the cursed Hojo family, but Shion chan of the Sonazaki family did not. That's what he meant. In other words, to the leaders of the village, including Kimiyoshi, members of the Hojo family are more uh, contemptible than insects. They didn't care if they lived or died. The sin was not only that they despised the Hojo family, so, but also that they let that hatred infect the rest of the village. Therefore, everyone in the village deserved to be a victim of the curse of Warrior Sama. The Miyoshi and the elders create an environment that excuse it was murder in that name. If that was so, if Takasan and Tomotakasan hadn't committed a serious crimes of trespassing in the ritual storehouse, 
and Sotoko Hojo, the last survivor of the Hojo family, and Tepe Hojo, who has been hiding in Okinawa, might have been the victims. Sotoko Hojo, she was always around Stoshikun. She expected Stoshikun to help her every time she cried. She was one of the people who cornered him. If Sotoko wasn't that much of a burden, Sotoko wouldn't have killed his aunt. Somebody told Sotoko to commit that murder and to hide the evidence of his connection to the mastermind, sotoko was deemed away. That's what Oishi thought. If sotoko hadn't killed his aunt, maybe he wouldn't have been chosen as last year's victim. Because the commands were vague, after all, the curse of Oishi somehow fell upon the Hojo family as a whole. It didn't matter which member of the family died. His aunt had a terrible reputation in the neighborhood. She didn't communicate with her neighbors, she was always throwing fits, and there was nothing nice about her in any way. Even if Sotoshikun didn't kill her, the curse would have fallen upon her sooner or later. Her aunt was the first victim. There needed to be an Hojo to calm the curse. According to a rumor, their uncle was living somewhere in Okinawa with his lover. However, Okinawa was a little different from Inemizawa. Sonozaki family was powerful there as well, of course. But it would have been more difficult in Okinawa to demon and summon away. Well, you say that, Shion, but, you know, what about their parents, Satoshi and Sadoko's parents? They didn't die in Hinami's Hour, they died while on holiday somewhere. So naturally, Satoshi Kun and Sadoko, who were still in Hinami's Hour, became the targets. Which one should be cursed? That was simple. Sadoko, of course, she was snobby and lacking in manners. Of course, favoritism just like, oh, he's just like, he's the best guy ever. Fuck you, Sadako. She just, she just hates Sadako because, well, well, because of Satoshi's position with it. She doesn't sympathize with Sadako in any way whatsoever. Everyone in the neighborhood likes Satoshi Goon, even if he was the son of the Hojo couple who betrayed the village during the dam conflict. But it's Sudoku, he didn't deserve to die. Therefore, the actual victims of last year's curse should have been his aunt and Sudoku. And look at this! <laughs> it's like, in her mind, she doesn't give two shits about it. It's like, if Sudoku got demoned away and the aunt got killed, she'd be like, I don't care! <laughs> Sudoku is still alive! <laughs> She wouldn't give a shit, but because Stoshkin's no one deemed away, she's fucking flipped her tits, lost her mind, and is pretty much, like, planning out, like, I don't even know how to describe her plan. Does she has a, does she even have a plan? She's trying to uncover the truth of this, but she's just so blinded by rage that she probably wouldn't even be able to figure it out. She's become very irrational. Satoshi Gun was suddenly all alone. His mean aunt and mean uncle were gone. His sister, who was a burden to him all his life, was gone too. Satoshi Gun was such a nice person. He would be sad, although he'd realize he was finally free. But time would heal him. I'd even help. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure he'd be all right with that, Shion. You just like you just assume that he like doesn't. He wants Satoko out of his life. No. He cares about Satoko. It's just that he's really hard with the freaking abusive uncle and aunt. And why do you think that happened, you know? Because, like, it's, it's kind of obvious. Satoshi killed the aunt, obviously. He did that to free Satoko and himself from that. But no, she just thinks it's like, oh no, even if Satoko was out of his life, he'd be all happy, right? No. You don't understand Satoshi as much as you think, Shion. In fact, she barely even freaking interact with the guy half the time. And for the most of her interactions with him, she was under the guise of Mion. He didn't have to live in his house in Hidmizar. There are plenty of empty rooms in the apartment block where I lived. I could find him a part-time job, too. He didn't need to go to school in his hour. He could go to the school with me in Okima instead. He wouldn't know his way around or really anything about the school there. So I'd be with Stoshkun all the time. I'd show him a shortcut to school. We'd go shopping and I'd teach him many different things. Sean is borderline freaking Yandere at this point, really, isn't she? Like, 
picture book. Just like, we're just like, no, it's mine. I mean, she wasn't, you know, full on Yandere all the time. In fact, she wasn't really a Yandere. She was kind of had a bit of a, you know, she was kind of a bit of a bitch here and there, but she wasn't Yandere. She was more kind of just like, I'm in love. It's like she was a bit kind of, you know, uh, judging on Satoko, just like, but it's just because she didn't really know, did she? The situation and all that crap. But you know, once like the whole thing transpires and shit starts to hit the fan, then she goes in the full on Yandere mode. So she wasn't always crazy, obviously. It's like she's appeared in other arcs as well, where she didn't really, you know, play an important role. So she isn't completely crazy, but in this case, she went completely bonkers. What an unbelievably happy ending. That's not a happy ending, that's a freaking bittersweet ending, if anything. It's like, oh, Stoko died as well, but hey, at least Satoshi and Shion got together, right? That's even if that would even happen. I mean, if Satoshi was all on his own, after, you know, losing Satoko as well, there's no telling what he would have done. He probably would have moved away to, you know, I don't know, lessen the me damage from the memory of it all. Such good had been suffering so much and I had been pushing away all my life. Pushed away. But we would finally be happy. Yeah, in your deluded brain, Shion. I enjoy those sweet delusions. Yeah, that's what they are, delusions. But I didn't have any more time to waste. I'm oh, sure there are plenty of old people who had been trying to get hold of Oreo all, all morning and who were going to try to catch me after I got home from school. Actually, the phone had been ringing constantly while I enjoyed my happy thoughts. Didn't this whole thought process start when she was like thinking back about Kimiyoshi? She hasn't even gone to check on him! <laughs> when I answered the phone, I casually listened and replied. As I planned, Keiichi Maibara is now known as the next curse victim within the underside of Inuizawa. Also tried to let them know that the disappearance of the village chief had something to do with the fact that he changed the lock on the ritual so I stop. The authorities in the underside came to realize the seriousness of trespassing in the storehouse. After all, one of the heads of the three families got punished. One of the phone calls was from Uichi. He had also heard about Kimiyoshi's disappearance and he knew it had something to do with the changing of the lock. I'm impressed. He has some pretty good sources. But all he can do is catch whatever information he can get. There's no way for him to find out where he's coming from. You know, it'd be what would make it really interesting is if Oishi got on to all of this. I mean, if you watch the, well, the Watanagashi one, which, you know, as I've said a million times, is the question arc to this answer arc. Uh, it was kind of Oishi's information that made Keiichi question. And if you recall, like, on why and how Shion was calling him. Because, you know, you got his information from Oishi. So Oishi got some, you know, he, he, he's he got some good sources indeed. But imagine if he found out, like, the whole thing. Just like, Shion was the one behind all this. But he still can only speculate. I'd call Keiichi Mabara again later tonight. Some of the more aggressive villagers may have already started to take action around him. I'm sure that by now Cage is feeling the danger that's coming towards him. I'd have to be careful that he doesn't get killed easily. If I could catch the enemy before they bit Cage, I can use him again as bait. Cage Maibara, I haven't known him for that long. He's funny if not intelligent. He'll never replace Dushkun. But I do think he's fun to be around. Just one thing I don't like about him. Rubs my head far too often. It's like, that's the only reason. That's why, Keiichi, if you die, I don't care. Simply because you're not a church coon and you don't have the careful bit of rubbing the, 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 the head. His hand is as warm as the coon's hand, which is why I can't stand it. But that's about it. Keiichi, my bar isn't the coon's enemy. I don't hit him. He's fun to be around, but I wouldn't shed a tear for him if he became a victim of the curse. Yeah, because you're freaking just like, you've just become the embodiment of revenge. 
She doesn't care. She's just like, charge through everyone. I won't prevent Kate and Mabar from being killed, but I won't kill him myself either. I'd made arrangements for the curse to fall upon him, but I never told anyone to kill him. Well, I suppose I did tell Rick Freda to take care of Kate and Mabar. Wait a minute. The Venceler Schoon, I'm doing exactly the same thing as the Hag did. Oh, now you realize how crazy you're sounding? I'm using the exact same system that kills the Schoon. Kate Mabara. I'm just using him. I told people to let the curse fall upon Keiichi, but I've been giving him appropriate warnings. I'm going to help him if he tries to live. If I catch all my enemies. Maybe I'll let him loose. He's it from Sudoshkun. Sudoshkun was tricked into killing his aunt and was killed himself afterwards, so there wouldn't be any evidence remaining. I won't kill Genji with my bar. That's how I'm different from the hag. Night falls, evening moves, turning to night. I have to get dinner ready. I have to eat so I have enough strength to take revenge. <laughs> That's literally her in a nutshell right now, isn't it? Wake up, uh, revenge, eat, sleep, repeat. So, if you saw Watanagachi, you know how her call to Keiichi is gonna go like. But we gotta see it from Shion's perspective now, but seriously. She is just like... <laughs> I wasn't kidding, you know, when I said, Oh, if you thought Watanagachi was dark and all that, just wait till you get the freaking... Uh, mech actually, which we're doing here, and you'll, it'll be even more darker because we'll see it from a different perspective. And, well, you've seen how it's gone so far. But I, again, no comments so far on this arc. I'm not really overly surprised, but still, some interesting shit's happened in these parts. Why does nobody comment on anything? Just like, so much as a damn, Shion, you'd be crazy. Whatever. I'll see you next time, viewers. See you next time.